All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. And today I'm joined by Amy Cates. How are you doing, Amy? I'm just fine. Thank you, John. And Amy is part of uh, managing uh, partner of the Cates uh, Kessler uh, organization, which uh, consults uh, in a number of areas, but particularly in organizational uh, options and implications and how to make uh, sound decisions around how to structure your, your organizations. You also teach at Cornell, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And uh, and obviously is a, also an author of uh, numerous books and, and speaks and writes on a regular basis. So you're pretty busy. I'm pretty busy, yes. <laughs> So for somebody listening, uh, Amy, uh, and Amy's in, by the way, in New York today, and I'm in San Diego. Um, Amy, for somebody listening, when you talk about designing, you know, organizational design or organization design, what, what do you mean by that? To some people that might sound, well, that sounds very high level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The field, John, is, is fairly new, maybe mm -hmm. 25 years old. Right. Uh, yeah. Because in the past, organizations were fairly simple, um, mm -hmm. but the world has gotten much more complex in the last uh, 20 years, and we have to think about not just strategy and people, but how do we really build an architecture of an organization so that people can come to work and do their best and understand, who do I talk to? How do decisions get made? How does work flow? So when we talk about organization design, it's... It's really the set of decisions you make after strategy to say, how do I want to configure my organization so that people can connect the right way horizontally, vertically, uh, to get work done? And typically, we work with companies that are global, that have multiple product lines, uh, that are, are developing new strategies, that are moving from you know business to business to business to consumer, introducing digital capabilities and this complexity really requires then um, an organization that can can match the complexity of that strategy um, yeah because it's interesting what you say there because you know a lot of companies obviously they they do their strategy and then they move straight to execution right and don't do that kind of structural piece and also a lot of organizations uh, you know traditionally kind of grow organically right i mean they or, and sure. the structures come about organically so w what happens when you get that uh, where where a company um moves from strategy to execution without the design part yeah so typically is it's strategy really not even to execution it's to org chart right so let's change the org chart change the direct report uh, structure let's consolidate some pieces let's make some new roles uh, to get things done. And we we design around people and the people that we have, as opposed to thinking about an organizational model that can last. So what happens when we don't really do design work to think about how structure, management process, reward mechanisms, and people processes work together in a system, what you do is you might solve a short-term problem by Let's say we take out some management layers so we compress the organization and say that'll speed decision making. We've changed the org chart, but we haven't changed the work. And so, so soon what we have is the organization starts to organically grow again to fill in those missing pieces. Um, so when we do our work with clients, we start with strategy, we look at capabilities, and we say, what's the organization model we want to organize toward? And then let's make smart decisions and build really a roadmap to get there. Yeah, and uh, and you raise an interesting point there because that is the big trap that uh, or uh, companies fall into is uh, fitting people uh, is, is starting with the people rather than with the the process or the organization or the structure, and then you kind of go, oh well, you know this person they've been around a long time, so we'll shoehorn them into this. Even though they're the work, even though they're completely not the right fit for it, right? But it's a real, it's a real temptation to do that, isn't it? Absolutely, and because that's tangible, I can see that I can make a change. You know, we often joke that organizations are are really, you know, three dimensional, invisible, abstract concepts. Mm -hmm. You you know, you feel the organization impacts you, but you can't see it. And so, when leaders or even HR professionals don't feel confident in the set of tools they have, then it's easy to go to the things that we can change that are tangible. Let's change the org chart, roles, jobs, 
people in those roles. So that's why we're so passionate in our firm about not just doing the work and consulting, but writing and teaching and making videos and doing workshops to really build the skills out there and demystify this. Mm -hmm. And the, the, other, the other trap that people uh, fall into a lot is, uh, is this idea of you can only scale by people, right? You can only add more and more and more people without taking a step back and, and looking at the efficiency part, looking at sure. the structural part. Um, when, you, when you work with organizations, is that something you come across a lot where they're just throwing people at problems rather than analyzing the issues? Yeah. And I certainly never walked into any company and, and done interviews or focus groups where anybody ever said, gee, I just don't have enough to do. We're not busy here. Yeah. Right. So everybody's busy and yet feels and feels overwhelmed with communication and priorities. And yet we have inefficiency in the work and high costs. So and, and the usual answer is you're absolutely right. Let's put more throw more people at the problem, but more People actually generate work as much as they do work. They create surface area. They ask for meetings. They ask for data. They ask for reports. Um, so one of the things that we go in and look at is, is, is really to start with the work. Let's, let's redesign the work and the workflows in the context of the strategy and capabilities we want to get done and then look at people. And what, you know, what's going on right now with machine learning, artificial intelligence, automation, which is you know, it's been building, it's been there a little bit, but it's going to come fast and big, is fundamentally going to change the nature of work, not just what we've seen in, in manufacturing or service work or uh, call center kinds of things, but really in marketing, in R&D, in where we thought, you know, this is where people's jobs is, are really about decision making. It is uh, Artificial intelligence is going to change that. So Org design becomes even more important because we have to think about what's the unique contribution that we need people to make and be sure that we have the right skills in the right place and that, again, we, we organize so we can do unique things together. Yeah, and, and that's an, an interesting you to bring that up about AI and machine learning and that and, and bots and all of that kind of stuff because I do, I mean, obviously we are seeing that rapidly coming into 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 many organizations but we still don't have a great grip on how as you say how to combine it with the people and at the end of the day yeah and we always have this thing about pendulums don't we like pendulum goes it's like <laughs> oh, let's replace everything with ai and machine learning and then mm -hmm. Um, so when you're talking with organizations how are you helping them through this transition because i can see this is on the horizon for a lot of people yeah, yeah. So first, just I, I, you're absolutely right about pendulums. And what's interesting, you know, 15 years ago is all about outsourcing. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of companies bringing back some of that because they, they pushed too much out the door and that was core to their capabilities. Mm -hmm. When we work with organizations, you know, what's changed, I think, is strategy is still important, but it's less about, hey, we have a three-pronged strategy that's good for five to seven years. We're going to organize toward that and get into some steady state. We're working with a lot of organizations in industries in which we don't know what's going to be a winning strategy. So when you think about media, about cable television, entertainment, content related, how do, are we going to get people to pay for what you do, <laughs> you know, for example? And all of the old business models are really being challenged. So in a lot of ways, the work is not to design an organization to a fixed strategy, but it's to create organizations that can sense the environment, that can make decisions quickly, that can experiment and rapidly prototype and try out different ways to see what's going to work and make good decisions around a portfolio of opportunities um, because we don't know, you know which is going to be that winner. Um, and so that's that's new and unsettling for a lot of uh, leaders. Yeah, because what you've described there is obviously anathema to the way organizations were in years gone by. I mean, this idea of you know being extremely flexible and fluid and able to react and you know prototype and and experiment. I, I, I mean, a lot of people were not set. Um, organizations are not set up that way, right? So this is obviously. The, the big challenge ahead uh, for people like you when you work with organizations is how do you take and and you probably and I'm sure you've done this obviously with some organizations but how do you take a very maybe traditional organization and help them on that journey to being a little more flexible yeah. and fluid? 
Yeah, yeah. And you know what's interesting is that flexi flexibility and fluidity is not um, just chaos, right? Mm -hmm. You actually need more leadership, you need more discipline, you need more process in order to be fast and adaptable, especially when you're when you're looking at an organization that's in multiple regions and again has multiple product lines trying to come together for common customers um, and then make this change. So um, the way to do it is, is it has to start it, from the top as well as from the bottom. So it's about leadership really being clear about where they want to go and what those new behaviors are and what success looks like. Again, we might not know the strategy, we might not know what even products we have, but we know how it will feel for our customers and how we need to work together. Then it's about unleashing some of those experiments down close to the customer, right? Um, it's not about just having something up at corporate that says, oh, this is innovation, here it is. It's really helping the people who see and touch the customer every day, try new ways and create networks to really see what works and, and invest in those. So it's a lot of almost an internal venture kind of mindset that you have to build. And that has to happen over time. It's, it's not just hiring a person. So. Again, this idea of capabilities, uh, you know, we make the distinction, we say a competency lives in a person, mm -hmm. but a capability, an organizational capability is something we do together. And so focusing on that, on how do we need to work together in new ways to get different decisions, new outcomes, um, is really the org design work. Yeah, so it's not a question of just hiring a you know a chief chaos officer or whatever <laughs> something new like that. But I love that thought. Uh, what you're saying about the fact is the flexibility and fluidity does not equal uh, chaos because it can't. Because uh, obviously chaos is the opposite. Everything kind of grinds to a halt, a glorious halt eventually. Uh, so the other thing that kind of really intri intrigues me uh, about this is you know, you went back to leadership, right? As you said, leadership at the beginning. So that's that's a big challenge now is for leaders to transition to being different types of leaders. And in the past, maybe the command and control is it doesn't work so much anymore. And it's more the it's more having this structural vision and then getting the right people to implement it. Absolutely. But but make no mistake, it is not a. Uh... It is not abdication of sure. decision making. Uh, you know, again, walking into so many companies, doing org assessments, what I hear over and over, the, the number one issue that I hear across companies, we have too many priorities. Our leaders are not making choices. They're not setting direction or helping us make trade-offs. Where do I spend my time? Where are we making investments? And so the work of leadership today is to make some of those big bets, again, and and then nurture the small port the portfolio of small opportunities and and know when to stop a project know when to double down on a project to move resources and that takes a lot of courage that takes a lot of collaboration that takes a high performing leadership team to make trade offs against all of these different options low ego and then it takes managers who are great coaches to help people really work in the teams across these boundaries to get new work done uh, so, so the change that we see is absolutely, you're right, it's not command and control, it's not figure out and tell me what to do, it's give me the framework so that I can come to work and spend my energy in the right, the right way. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that idea of choice because it's, it's a bit of a soapbox of mine. This idea is like human beings, as human beings, we hate making choices. We think we like, <laughs> but we really hate it because when you choose one thing, you by definition or default unchoose other things. And we prefer to hedge our bets all the time. And I do think we're, we, we're in, a, in a world, you're, you're right now, you're, we're in a world where you, ha you have to make choices and you have to make bets. And if you make a wrong choice, you've got to get out of it quickly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So speed. Uh, you know, if, if, if I was to say, what's the biggest difference I've seen in the last, you know, 20 years of doing this kind of work? It's not the world wasn't complex before, global, but the speed of, of, of expectation has changed. So what technology has done is it, it has sped up cycle times of product development, of, of customer expectation, of R&D. And yet, we need, to, we need to connect the vast middle of managers in our global organizations. And you know, I often say as human beings, we haven't really evolved in the last 20 years. We don't process information any faster. We still like to build relationships and get things done through trust. 
And so this pressure to be faster, to make good, fast decisions is really what drives a lot of organizational change. How do we reconfigure to get the right connections to make better, faster decisions? Because at the end of the day, that's what wins. Yeah, and that obviously requires a good level of being able to process engineer very fast, right? Yes, yes, yes. So it's really management processes, business processes, workflows, decision processes, governance forms. Frankly, it's all the stuff that leaders and managers hate to do. It's not a fun thing <laughs> that you know we sign up to do to say, I, I, I'm going to be ahead of a function and ahead of a business unit. This, but this is the work. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, and I think that's a, that's a that's a great point also to to touch upon there. Yeah, it's not it's not probably the most exciting of work for people, but as you as you have laid out quite clearly here, that if you don't get your processes right, all the different processes right, you, you're not going to be able to move with speed, and you're not going to be able to, um, you know, have have success, and 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 you're not going to be able to change direction if you need to fast either. Exactly. Exactly. Again, that idea of discipline, rigor, you know, how we run teams, how we meet, how we make decisions, how we manage work and handoffs but across boundaries, all of that helps us actually to move faster. But it means, John, putting the time in to design those, mm-hmm. being thoughtful, and then also keeping them healthy because they don't last. Yeah. As we change direction, we need to change all of those pathways and mechanisms and, and what I urge leaders to do is to explain that to employees so that it's not, we've made an org change, this time we got it right, it should last, because it won't. And then they won't, it, it reduces trust and credibility. Rather to say, we have an organizational vision, just like we have a strategic vision, we'll be organizing toward that, and here's what you can expect as we move forward together. Um, just a healthier yeah. way of managing change. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a that's a fantastic point to to end on here is that idea of uh getting people comfortable with the fact that what you're designing is the best thing you can design for today, hopefully for tomorrow, but maybe the day after that we might have to change again. I mean, you look at as you said the speed of disruption. I mean, you mentioned the 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 broadcast and TV industry. I mean, who they wouldn't have thought a few years ago that they get so blindsided by streaming and now they they're struggling for business models. They can't. So I mean, I I I think that's a it's a great thing to uh, to end on that idea of the fact is you you we're not we're not building to steady states, right? We're building the best for now. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's a growing field. There's lots of resources out there. You know, we've been making videos and articles and books and really trying to help people understand there are tools, there are frameworks, there's methods to think about this and have the conversation together um, and just make make smarter decisions about your organization. Yeah. So, Amy, before we go, uh, if you just like to tell everybody a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can learn more about you and what you do. Sure. Uh, So we're Kate's Kessler Organization Consulting. I'm Amy Kate's. My partner is Greg Kessler. We have a wonderful team of just about a dozen people that work with us. And all we do is help leaders and leadership teams make smart decisions about their organization. But we also teach org design, uh, as you mentioned, through Cornell public programs, in-house programs. Um, We have the uh, LinkedIn Learning Series um, uh, online, as well as YouTube channel of videos, and our website, kateskessler.com, has lots of articles and blogs on the topic uh, if people are interested. So we're always eager to to share and to teach and, and always happy to have someone contact me with a question. Great. Listen, Amy, this has been fantastic. And I, uh, I encourage people to check out more about this because I'm I'm a firm believer that it's it's how you organize yourself is how you're going to win in the future because you're going to have to be moving in so many different directions and being able to be, 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 be very, very flexible in that. So again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Amy Kate, it's been a pleasure. Um, look forward Thank to you. seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Okay.